Number five, with the aid of a string, a gyroscope is accelerated from rest to 32 radians per second in 0.4 seconds. What is the angular acceleration in radians per second squared? All right, so just like in the uh, previous problem, uh, when you're dealing with uh, rotational kinematics, just get rid of the term angular, and you can think about it in terms of then linear uh, kinematics. So for example, they are telling us that this gyroscope accelerated from rest or zero velocity to then 32 radians per second. Now that is an angular velocity, but you can just think of that as a linear velocity in terms of trying to identify what equation to use. So we know the initial velocity is zero, the final velocity then would be 32. The time was 0.4 seconds, and they're asking us to find the acceleration, right? So you'd say, okay, I need to know A, what equation of kinematics relates those variables, and you'll say to yourself, oh, right, this one does, VF plus VI, excuse me, VF equals VI plus AT, and all I gotta do is solve this for A. So when you're thinking now in terms of rotational kinematics, you can use this as your linear analog and basically just then substitute in omega for the velocity, right? Because omega represents angular velocity. Substitute in alpha for the A in accel for acceleration, and that would represent angular acceleration. So the formula I need here is going to be this. Final angular velocity will equal the initial angular velocity plus the angular acceleration multiplied by time. And all we have to do is now solve this for alpha. Right, so just doing the algebra quickly, this would be uh, omega f minus omega i all over t. And now all we have to do is plug in the values, right? The final is 32, the initial is zero, the time is 0.4 seconds. So here we get now 32 over 0.4. So it comes out to be 80, and that is in terms of radians per second squared, all right? And now, that takes care of letter A, and now letter B, uh, we would have to now find out, it says, how many revolutions does it go through in this process? So in terms of the, uh, the variable that you're looking for, revolutions is theta, okay? Uh, I mean, not, ex not exactly, right? I mean, revolutions is, uh, or I should say theta is in terms of radians, Right, but we need to calculate radians first in order to get to revolutions. So basically, I need to find theta. The linear analog uh, to your theta is distance, all right, is d. So uh, if you're thinking in terms of then your linear equations, you're like, well, I know the, uh, I know the initial, I know the final, right? I know the time, and now I'm being asked for a distance. Uh, what formula should I use if I were thinking about this in terms of a linear problem? Well, we would have used this equation. We would have used uh, VF squared is equal to VI squared plus 2AX, uh, right? Or the X is really the D, okay, the distance. So um, all we now have to do is translate this into the analog uh, in rotational kinematics now. So basically, remember, velocity is omega, A is alpha, and then the distance is theta. So it's going to be omega F squared is equal to omega I squared plus two times alpha times theta. All right, now you could have then, um, so, uh, so th th this should work out uh, to be uh, not an issue. We have alpha over here, right? So now all we have to do now is just basically plug in the values. Um, so the final omega, so actually let's just solve this for theta right now. Just doing the algebra, we should be able to get a value of this, omega f squared minus omega i squared, all over two times my alpha value. So let's plug in the value. So it's 32 squared minus zero, all divided by then two times our alpha of 80. Right, that's basically an exact value because it's just 32 over 0.4. So you can plug in 80 here if you want, or you can plug in the value of 32 over 0.4. Doesn't matter, it's all the same thing. So let's see what we get in terms of theta. So it's gonna be 32 squared divided by uh, two times then 80. And here we get a value of 6.4. Right, so 6.4 radians. 
Now that's almost the answer, right? Remember we need revolutions, so all we have to do is convert radians into revolutions and we have our answer. So we just take the 6.4 radians, multiply it then by two pi radian on the bottom, one revolution on the top because there are two pi radians for every one revolution. So take your 6.4 and divide it by then two pi, and we get a value of about 1.02 or so. So 1.02, so it looks like one sig fig, so 1.0 revolutions. So it obtains about, uh, whoops, it obtains about one revolution. Guys, thanks for tuning in. All right, please remember to subscribe. It helps us a lot. Please, please. And uh, hit that like button if it helped. And I look forward to helping you with the next question. Take care.